Lake team, as we said, that uh, comes in top 10 in the country. So again, here at Hoop Hall South in Bentonville, some of the best teams in America are on display, and we're going to see that again, and we'll see it a few more times before this event wraps up tomorrow evening here in Bentonville, Arkansas. In the little research that we've been doing here throughout looking at these teams, I always think it's interesting who went to that school. I do too. Uh, Michelle Obama, a, a notable alum of Whitney Young. And then if you're Harvard-Westlake, it, it's really the who's who of, of everything. Uh, on the actor-actress side, both the Gyllenhaals, you got John Lovitz, you got Shirley Temple. Wow. So <laughs> she went there. And then they have an incredible... Uh, starting line of pitchers, if you were a Major League Baseball team, they've got Lucas Giolito, Max Free, and Jack Flaherty. I think you win a couple games if yes. those are the guys you roll out there. If those that if that's your rotation, you're gonna you're gonna win a lot of games. That's for sure. So Harvard Westlake will start Trent Perry along with Robert Hinton, Nicholas Kimania, Brady Dunlap, and Jacob Huggins. Whitney Young starting Dalen Davis, Daniel Johnson, Antonio Munoz, Demaje Chadwick, and Marcus. Pigram, and this game is underway, and the ball goes out of bounds, and it'll belong to the Dolphins. Big names to watch for in this one. 11 on uh, Harvard-Westlake's Brady Dunlap. He's headed to Notre Dame to play with Mike Bray. The Dolphins' first possession of this contest after an impressive win last night in the nightcap against Fayetteville. Munoz Gives it away up top. Now it's Davis. 15 on the timer. Davis probes inside, backs it out. Pigram driving. He fades, and it bounces in. The iron was kind to Marcus Pigram. I think they're familiar with those rims. They know just get it up there. It'll settle down for you. So the first points of the game for Pigram and Whitney Young. Here is Perry in the front court for the Wolverines. Here's Dunlap. He'll take the three-pointer. Off the iron, no. Rebounded by Munoz. He looked really comfortable settling into that. That might be his game. He's working open for three-pointers top of the key. Davis will fire from outside, and that's no good. And the rebound goes to Dunlap. Just a little over a minute gone here in the first period. Hinton thought about taking the triple, now passes it up. Kima Nia spins inside. That was a nice move, and he scores. Just kept spinning until he found an open look and really earned that one. Nicholas Kaminia with the bucket to level this game at two. Just a sophomore, too. Munoz, that's a two. It's off the iron, rebounded by Kaminia. Nearly lost the handle, gets it across the court. Hinton fires from outside, no good. Offensive board, Huggins. Huggins right down the baseline, and he scores. Would not be denied there. He kept getting pushed back with a box out and worked his way there. At the other end, Johnson misses from outside, and the rebound is cleared by Hinton. Down inside and a jam for Jacob Huggins. Back-to-back -back buckets for Huggins. Keep feeding him. Great positioning from Huggins in back-to-back -back possessions. Here's a look from outside. Johnson off the iron. And the board is cleared by the Wolverines. They lob it inside again, and this time Huggins gets bumped on his way to the basket. Our first foul of the game. And that's going to go on Daniel Johnson. From Whitney Young, that's his first. Baseline out of bounds. Kaminia is the trigger man. Lobbing it up there and another foul. They were trying to feed him again with Huggins. And it'll be free throws this time for Jacob Huggins. So Huggins is going to be joining... A guy on the other team at Princeton next year. Dalen Davis heading to Princeton. So is Huggins. That foul, by the way, was on Daniel Johnson. That's two on him. He had 26 
in the game last night and already saddled with two fouls and we haven't played three minutes. That rolls off and it's rebounded by Johnson. So he's staying in there right now with two fouls for Coach Slaughter and the Dolphins. Pigram able to keep possession. Davis along two off the iron. Rebound taken away and the Dolphins have another chance at it. Down the baseline, Munoz reverses and misses. The follow doesn't go for Johnson. Munoz gets it again. Johnson this time scores. Daniel Johnson. Whitney Young is working really hard. They don't have the team height, but they have the team heart right now. 30-second timeout. That was a, a group effort to get that basket. So it's a 6-4 lead right now for Harvard-Westlake. And I'm curious to see how Coach Slaughter manages Daniel Johnson. I mean, he's obviously one of your top players, and you need him out there as much as you can, but you also got to be aware of that foul situation. Uh, you, you know, there's a lot of other things at play here. This is a, is a showcase opportunity for a senior player who's not committed yet. Right. So Daniel Johnson needs every, every opportunity he can get to play against high-level talent like this. He's you know, being recruited right now by Akron, DePaul, Northern Illinois, and Toledo and just waiting for one of those phone calls to really register with him. And, and you continue to put together efforts like you did last night and what could come here. Every moment he's on the court, it's big for him. So Harvard-Westlake with the possession and the lead. Here's Perry off the back of the iron and Munoz out jumps everybody for the board. Pigram gets it over to Dalen Davis and He'll orchestrate the offense here for Whitney Young. Now it's in Chadwick's hands. Four and a half to go here in the opening quarter. Davis had to take it away. That's Perry with the steal. Perry pushing it ahead, and that was denied from behind. The putback goes in. Robert Hinton cleans up the miss after the block shot. Eight to four now the count. Whitney Young with the ball down by four. Munoz, contact on the baseline, Ooh. and we got a blocking foul. They're going to get Kaminia for his first. Little shuffle there late by the sophomore. Seals the call. As Kaminia now will check out after that foul. So the Dolphins working with a fresh shot clock after the foul. Davis fades in the paint and scores. Davis. First bucket for Dalen Davis on the night, and again, it's a two-point game. Brady Dunlap looks inside. Hinton was wide open. They close on him quickly, and the ball's knocked away. It'll stay here with the Wolverines. Early stages here. Whitney Young very much belongs in this basketball game. And they're scrapping and doing all the defensive things they need to to keep this a tight one. So here is Christian Ori, who checked in a moment ago for Comedia. Goes inside now to Huggins. And Hinton had it knocked away from him out of bounds. Wolverines keep it, but they've got eight on the shot clock. See if they're aware of it. Five on the timer. Perry. Perry right to the cup, missed the shot. And the board is tracked down by Davis. Good job there by Daniel Johnson, late to challenge. Three-pointer in the air, off the mark by Johnson. And here's Perry taking it the other way. Ahead for Hinton, and Hinton scores. Robert Hinton. So four for Robert Hinton, and that's the margin. Harvard-Westlake leads by four. Right to the cup, doesn't go. Munoz with the putback. Soft touch. It bounced just right. Munoz in the right place. Back and forth here so far. Two and a half to go here, first quarter. At the elbow, Huggins backs it out. Perry. Feeds it inside. Ori draws a double. Perry from the corner. Three-pointer won't go. 
And Pigram takes it the other way. On the break, Johnson to the basket, tries to reverse. Defended well by Brady Dunlap. Down the baseline, Hinton hangs and hits. Robert Hinton. So that's six now for Hinton. Two tough angle baskets in a row for Hinton. Under the basket quite a bit two possessions ago, and then that one hanging and adjusting to make this a four-point game. Dolphins slowing things down just a little bit here in the latter stages of the first quarter. Chadwick backs it out at foul line jumper. Johnson won't go. He's having a tough go of it offensively in this quarter. He's getting looks, just they're not dropping. Here's a three for Dunlap from way outside. He connects. Harvard Westlake scored the last five until that bucket right there for Dalen Davis. Here's Dunlap again. This time he can't connect, and Munoz clears the board. Chadwick drives in, and he gets fouled on his way to the basket. This is a track meet and a half <laughs> right now. Uh, I said a moment ago it slowed down. It didn't slow down for very long. That foul was on Ori. That's his first. A couple changes made for each team to the lineup. And the Wolverines out of Studio City, California, have a five-point lead. And the inbounds pass is stolen by Trent Perry. He's got a three-on-one. Perry, and how about the defensive effort there by Sean Brown to break up the fast break? I was just going to make note of how many six-footers or around six-footers there are for Whitney Young, and they're all playing so big in more ways than one, and Sean Brown living up to my thought there. Here's Kaminia back in there now to Perry. Harvard Westlake getting into their set. Perry drops it off. Soft touch from Kamenia for two. And just to kind of expand on that a little bit more, not a player, not a single player shorter than 6'3 has made the floor yet for Harvard Westlake. And Whitney Young is built with six footers. But this hasn't been a game where offensive rebounds or rebounding has been super prevalent. Block shots. Whitney Young playing a lot bigger physically than they are. Final 10 seconds here of the first quarter. Pigram off the bounce, floats, and Kamenia affected that shot. Two seconds and one. That will not count from half court. And that's going to do it for the first quarter of play with Harvard-Westlake. Leading Whitney Young 17 to 10. We'll be right back. You're watching Hoop Hall South presented by Walmart. Back here, Hoop Hall South, presented by Walmart from Bentonville, Arkansas. Whitney Young, Harvard Westlake, a seven point game here as we get ready to start quarter number two. And Harvard Westlake will have the basketball as we get this thing going. Harvard Westlake, led by Robert Hinton, with six. Dalen Davis has four, leading the way for Whitney Young on the other side. It feels a lot closer than a seven-point yeah, game. It really does. And the three-pointer from the corner doesn't go there for Dunlap. 
Here go the Dolphins on a break. No numbers. Munoz with a collision and an offensive foul. Yeah, trying to gather after the pass. So that's the first on Munoz, the third on the team. And the Wolverines will have it with a seven-point advantage. Huggins going to work at the foul line, now backs it out to Ori. Kaminia around Munoz for two. That's a good little move there. Keep calling him a sophomore, he's playing well above that grade. Largest lead for Harvard Westlake, they're up by nine. This is Pigram. Munoz looking for something inside. It wasn't there. Now Chadwick drives, scoops it up. Couldn't get it to drop off the glass. Kaminia taking it the other way. Kaminia's pass knocked out of bounds by Pigram. Well, Coach Rubito thought about putting Trent Perry back in the game, but decided not to, so... He'll stick with his five players that are on the court right now. Kaminia, a four-star player, ninth best player in California, 65th best in his class in the country. Looks from Nebraska, Southern Utah, and Stanford so far in his young process. It's Brando Fuqua with the ball. Now Kaminia's got it again. He'll try a three-pointer, and that's good. Kaminia's got nine. And you talk about somebody Getting some attention. Yeah, he's on the up and up right now. He's got nine here, as I said. There's the three-pointer at the other end, and that goes. Dalen Davis. Davis has seven. A good answer from the future Princeton Tiger. Six fifteen to go here until halftime. Buqua loses the dribble. Gets it down low. Huggins. The one-hander goes. Jacob Huggins. That's six, that's six for Huggins. Harvard Westlake just handling the pressure on defense so well. Wow. Davis again. Dalen Davis. Might be Dalen Davis time. Well, he's got nine. Here's Dunlap from outside. Doesn't drop. Rebounded by Brown. With Johnson out, this is your offense here. Here he goes, and it doesn't drop for Davis that time off the rim. Rebounded by Fuqua. Now Kaminia charges in there and puts it home. Wow. Yeah, between West and now here in Hoopal South, Kaminia is having a good little recruiting couple weeks. He's given his team their largest lead. They're up 11. Brown away to Chadwick. Munoz thought about the three. Drives instead. Left hand shot good. That was real tough. Good work to get there and even better work to finish under the basket. That's four for Munoz. Fuqua on the perimeter. Again picks up the dribble. Here's the man again, Kaminia. Cut off this time defensively. Now Dunlap with a three that's too long. And here come the Dolphins in transition. Davis tries to go behind his back, lost the dribble. The Dolphins keep the possession alive and back to Davis it goes. Davis attacking on Kamenia. Kamenia will draw the foul. He wanted a clean block there. I think he got it, it just was the body. Yeah. Because he blocked it twice pretty clean, but it was a little body shot there. And that's a uh, savvy senior move there from Dalen Davis. Well, he drew the second foul on Kaminia. And Davis is at the free throw line. And the first one is pure. He's into double figures with 10 now on the, on the night. Couple new looks here for Harvard Westlake. We're seeing Dominique 
Bentho, freshman, 6'8", big body in there for the first time. Here's the second free throw. Davis off the back iron, and Hinton gets the easy rebound. Halfway through the second quarter, and it's a 26-18 lead for Harvard-Westlake. Entry pass too high there for the big guy, Bentho, and it goes out of bounds. Yeah, he was trying to direct the ball to swing the other direction, and while pointing, the ball started heading his way, and he tried to adjust it. Tipped it out of play. Here's Davis looking for a screen for Munoz. Wide open on the opposite side. Pigram misses from three. Rebounded by Hinton and then Hinton had to take it away. More great defense from Sean Brown. Davis is tied up on that drive. It's going to stay here with the Dolphins. But Sean Brown, that's two nice plays we've seen him make. He was shorthanded on the fast break, broke it up, and broke up and got a free possession here for his team right there. Now Pigram goes around Dunlap and puts it in. Good defensive effort there from Brady. He's going talking to his coaches saying, well, I don't know what more do you want me to do. <laughs> Whitney Young scored the last five. They've cut it to six. Here is Dunlap down low or at the elbow. Perry turns and hits. Screened that one open. Good catch at the elbow. Munoz now to Davis. Here he goes again with a left hand at Davis. He's got 12. At the other end, there's a three for Brady Dunlap, his second hit from outside. We're hitting that turbo booster again. Davis from outside, not there. Perry clears. Yeah, if you're Whitney Young, you just got a really good possession. And then Brady Dunlap drops that on you. From the corner, that three-pointer off the mark from Ori. Brown in transition. Cut off, drops it off Davis. An extra pass underneath, and that won't drop but a foul. What a really good pass from Dalen Davis. That extra one gave the Dolphins a really good look, and Pigram couldn't finish at the rim. Upset with himself, but a lot of contact. That would have been a heck of an and one. Well, Pigram will shoot two. The foul on Bentho is his first. And he knocks down the free throw. Pigram's got five. Second game of four here tonight. Moravian Prep and Coronado. And then the one of local interest, Bentonville versus Bentonville West. Boys action tonight around 8.30. One out of two at the line. And here is Harvard-Westlake leading it by eight as we go under two minutes to go in the first half. Perry takes the driving lane, drops it off, and contact at a foul underneath as Bentho went up with it. Real strong there on that left block, uh -oh. Bentho. Ball was kind of tipped as it made its way to him. He grabbed it, went up strong, and earned this trip to the line. He, he headed right to the line. He knew he was fouled, knew what was coming his way. The foul on Pigram was his first. And Bentho makes the first of his two free throw attempts. It's his first point of the ball game. And both of those go for Bento. And he'll head out. Amir Jones will check in for him. If you're Whitney Young, you want to be at 10 or inside of it here at half. This does not feel like a 10-point game. No. And I think Coach Slaughter 
maybe think of the same thing. Like, guys, we're right there. That ball is knocked out of bounds. Last touch by the Dolphins, though. So an empty trip right there with 1.33 to go in the half. And you minimize those. It was a great extra pass that was tipped away. And then in an effort to try to regather it off of the Dolphins and to the Wolverines. Hinton drops it off. Perry from outside. That's off target. Offensive board, Huggins. And a fresh 35 here for the Wolverines. Hinton. And he hits from the baseline. A little show and go there, and then taking that mid range jumper. Hinton has eight, and the lead is 12. Final minute of this first half. Damage Chadwick backs it out. Here's Davis, a three pointer, and he cans it. 15 in the first half for Dalen Davis for Whitney Young. Amir Jones trapped on the baseline, nowhere to go. Gets it out to Perry to save the possession. And that's a traveling violation by Hinton. So now Whitney Young. Boy, big three there yep. from Davis. Then the turnover. Shot clock's off. Possession's all yours. Oh, well, Davis is dribbling up. Yeah. The clock's not going. Well, there's some confusion. Someone, <laughs> Someone's uh, Har trying, yeah. Harvard Westlake tried to get a player in late. They denied the substitution. Now I guess they'll let him check in, or maybe not. So we'll do the inbound again. But they could get this with a three to a six-point game at halftime. And that would be something. Well, Davis letting it tick down. It's 10 seconds. At five, Davis trying to lose his defender. Nowhere to go. Two, forces it up, rattles it in. What a half. Dalen Davis, who had 18 in the game last night, has 17 in the first half here. And Whitney Young. Very much in this thing, 35 to 28, Jimmy, at halftime. Them being at that point is all Dalen Davis. 17 at the break against a top 10 team in the country is quite a ball game, and he's got two more quarters to do more. Kamenia leading the way for Harvard Westlake with nine. Hinton's got eight for the Wolverines, but a strong half for Dalen Davis from Whitney Young from the Chicago area, and they are down seven, 35-28. Harvard-Westlake leads at the break. You're watching Hoop Hall South, presented by Walmart. Welcome to the 2022 Hoop Hall South team announcement special, presented by Walmart. Let's get right to it and meet the teams that will be showcasing their talents from December 15th through the 17th in Bentonville, Arkansas. The team probably everyone's excited about, Arizona Compass Prep is absolutely stacked with talent. They feature five ESPN 100 players, including senior Mookie Cook, who's headed to Oregon next year, Rayvon Griffith, who's committed to Cincinnati, and Trent Pierce, who will head to Missouri next season. Nearly the entire roster is D1 caliber players, and you won't want to miss the intense, high-flying style that the Dragons play. The hometown Bentonville Tigers will look to defend their home court. Six foot eight inch junior Caden Miller is one of the in-state studs that will be on display. Miller is ESPN's 39th best player in the Southeast region and has drawn a lot of mid-major and power five interest. No one could have or would have predicted Bentonville West High School becoming a nationally respected program after opening in just 2016. Coach Greg White credits a dirt road tough mentality and players who rise to every challenge placed on their schedule. Last season, West High went toe to toe with nationally respected Coronado, who's also in the field here, despite not even having a single D1 player on their roster. Two teams from out west will head to Bentonville for Hoopal South. Coronado from Henderson, Nevada brings the state's fourth best player in junior guard Josiah Cunningham. ESPN has Cunningham as the 46th best player in the West region, and his recruiting process just getting started after a great summer. Will Hoopal South be a coming out party for Josiah? The Bulldogs of Fayetteville High School head to Bentonville with hopes of representing the natural state when they take on Whitney Young from Chicago in their lone game at the end of 
the first night of action. After going 20-7, the Bulldogs' season ended when fellow Hoopal South team and host Bentonville knocked them off in the Arkansas 6A semifinals. The other West Coast team in Bentonville is Harvard Westlake from Los Angeles. The Wolverines are known for producing next-level athletes such as Major League Baseball pitchers Jack Flaherty, Max Fried, and Lucas Giolito, and NBA rookie Johnny Jazang. This year's senior Brady Dunlap is in the spotlight before he heads to play in South Bend for Mike Bray in Notre Dame next season. The number one ranked player in the West joins juniors Robert Hinton and Trent Perry to make Harvard Westlake a must-see team at Hoopal South this year. Five-star junior guard Honor Boatang and the Tigers of Little Rock Central take the short in-state trip to Bentonville. ESPN's 44th ranked junior has rising interest from many SEC schools and recently rose 41 spots to number 13 nationally in the rivals class of 2024 rankings. Honor's big year continued when he attended the USA Basketball Men's Junior National Team minicamp in October. Little Rock Christian Academy heads up the mountain to Bentonville to compete against Whitney Young High School out of Chicago. The Warriors are led by junior Landon Blocker and freshman J.J. Andrews, two 6'5 guards who have multiple SEC offers. Moravian Prep heads over from North Carolina and brings four-star forward Mayar Wohl to Hoopal South. The South Sudanese senior stud committed to the College of Charleston this past year after being ranked 54th in the Southeast region by ESPN. Joining Wohl is sophomore guard Eli Ellis Rivals, 35th best player in the class of 2025. Ellis has eight college offers, including West Virginia, Virginia Tech, and Ole Miss. Simeon Career Academy out of Chicago heads down south for Hoopal. Senior forward and Loyola Chicago commit Miles Rubin and his brother and front court running mate Wesley will give the Wolverines a post presence. Simeon Academy has been a professional basketball breeding ground as Derek Rose, Nick Anderson, Taylor Horton Tucker, Zach Norvell Jr., Jabari Parker, and Kendrick Nunn all help make Simeon a powerhouse. The Windy City will actually send two teams south as the Whitney Young Dolphins head to Bentonville. Princeton commit point guard Dalen Davis and senior shooting guard Daniel Johnson are standouts for Michelle Obama's alma mater. This year will also feature three girls teams as Perry High School from Arizona and hometown squads Bentonville High and Bentonville West will lace them up. Bentonville High features guard Ella Campbell who is ranked 27th in the senior class on prep girls hoops and guard Abby Kate Sanders who's ranked 59th. Bentonville West seniors New Johnson will be another player to watch, as will Perry's forward Camille Pierre, who is ESPN's 87th best player in the 2023 class, and she has committed to Vanderbilt. And finally, here's a look at the full schedule for Thursday through Saturday. And a quick recap of the top players to watch December 15th through the 17th in Bentonville, Arkansas. Three days, 14 teams, 12 games, expect a whole lot of action at Bentonville High School in mid-December. Tickets are on sale now for each day, so make sure you grab your seats to see some of basketball's future stars. Thanks for watching and see you in Arkansas.
Welcome back here, Hoop Hall South, presented by Walmart from Bentonville High School. And a matchup between Harvard Westlake from California and Whitney Young High out of Illinois. And it's a seven point lead for the Wolverines at halftime here. Derek Ruskin along with Jimmy Smith and um, Jimmy, we talked about it. Dalen Davis, the uh, big performer in that first half for Whitney Young with uh, 17. Yeah, he. you mentioned it, 18 in game one, 17 in half one of game two. He is everything they needed there to get back into this one. It was kind of around a six, eight, ten point game there for a while that didn't feel like that. And then they kind of closed it up, tightened it up. It's a seven pointer at the break, but a lot of that because of Davis's, well, really all of that because of Davis's 17. And we're talking about a six foot guard taking on a lineup of six, four, six, 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 seven guys that all the way one through five from Harvest Westlake can defend. And so a lot of grit and grind there from the Dolphins. And we saw that with Simeon. We saw that last night with these Dolphins. Chicago bringing that tough mentality here to Hoopal South. So it will be Harvard Westlake ball as we start the second half. Waiting on him to get the shot clock turned on. There we go. And now Hinton will inbound it for the Wolverines. Hinton, Perry, Huggins, Kaminia, and Dunlap starting five on the floor here for the Wolverines. Kaminia down on the block, back out. Hinton, baseline jumper off the iron. Kaminia gets the offensive board. Now he's doubled on the baseline, drops it off for Dunlap, and Dunlap puts it in. Dunlap started his jump facing towards his bench, turned in the air, kind of floated, and then got a really good shot up and in. Well, here's Whitney Young's first offensive touch of this second half. And the baseline jumper does not fall. Here's Kaminia the other way. Dunlap all alone for the three-pointer, and he buries it. Yeah, you don't want to do that. He had a chance to dribble, gather, do his taxes, and then <laughs> make this a 12-point game. Yeah, missed assignment there defensively, and the Wolverine lead is back to double figures. On the perimeter, Pigram drops it off. Johnson too long with the three. Perry taking it the other way. And alone again, Hinton this time. That's off target from the corner. And the rebound is wrestled away by Damage Chadwick. Munoz, and they reverse it. Pigram, Munoz right down the baseline for two. Good athletic play there along the baseline. Had the defense collapsing, took kind of a augmented Euro step towards the baseline, then back in. Well, it's a 10 point game again. And we've played nearly two minutes here in the third quarter. Perry. And Kamenia in the corner for three, missed it all. Munoz gathers in the rebound. Chadwick setting things up here for the Dolphins of Whitney Young High. Here's Davis. Here's his first shot of the second half, and it's off the back of the iron, rebounded by Kaminia. Perry at the elbow. Now drives down the lane. Good defense there by Munoz. And way to hold his ground, and bad pass though. Gotta wait the extra second for them to clear out. And Kaminia drops it off. A missed shot and a putback by Hinton. Hinton followed his own miss and put it down. And it's a 42-30 lead here for Harvard Westlake. They elect to take a timeout here with 5.13 to go in this Third quarter, and we'll take a break as well. You're watching Hoop Hall South, presented by Walmart.
Well, it's been a 7-2 start to the half in favor of Harvard-Westlake, and they've pushed their lead up to 12 here with 5.13 to go in quarter number three. Well, the ball in this guy's hands. Dalen Davis has made things happen in the first two quarters. Let's see what quarter three has in store for him. Hesitation dribble, throws it back over his head to the corner. Chadwick was all alone. He missed the three-pointer. Big rebound, and a putback goes in for Pigram. Marcus Pigram. Way to go up and get it amongst the much taller players. And then a little bit of a flat shot, but he got the roll. So it's back to 10. Trent Perry working on Chadwick off the glass, doesn't go. Munoz clears the boards. Dolphins will push it. Driving in, Davis. Ah, he still got it. Well, that's his first bucket in the second half, and he got the foul. That is on Kaminia, and that's his third. It's a big foul for that reason as well. Kaminia is going to take a seat. Coach is talking to him about body positioning, hands up on that defensive effort. Well, Davis now with 20 points in the game, and we're right where we were to start the third quarter. It's a seven-point spread. 20 of the 35 for his squad. Hinton on the perimeter. Dunlap keeps it alive. Here's Dunlap over on the far sideline. Perry. High post with eight on the shot clock, and that's knocked away. Last touched by Whitney Young, so seven to shoot here for the Wolverines. Munoz poking that out late. He was hoping that Johnson would get to it in time, but he couldn't. And so they'll trigger this in right at the basket. Perry looking to get it over the long arms, and that's a five count. He didn't get it in in time. Ray, the, uh, Daniel Johnson had those arms up and they couldn't find anybody to get it into. First five second violation of the tournament. And maybe what the Dolphins need. Well, they've scored the last five. Here's Davis again, draws the contact and he'll shoot two more at the line. He just willed that ball from his left hand across his body during that foul. He was giving everything he had to try to get rid of that, but Got the foul call as well. Brady Dunlap picks it up. It's his first. And here's Dalen Davis with two free throws, and the first one's good. He's now up to 21 on the night. They've got this down to a six-point game. And an 8-0 run now for the Dolphins. The margin is five. Perry. Now Christian Ori. Here's Perry again. A floater. Left it short. And it's Pigram taking it the other way. Now Chadwick. The Dolphins' defense seems to be bothering Harvard-Westlake. It looks like it's a 1-3-1, sometimes a 2-3. There's a kind of a floater that's out there that's causing a lot of havoc. Here's Chadwick on the drive. Munoz turning on the block. Nowhere to go. Backs it out. Ted on the shot clock. Pretty spin move there as Pigram goes in. Count it! And one! One of the best takes we've seen so far at Hoop Hall South. A reverse scoop kind of over his head. It was quite beautiful and could make this a two-point game. Off the back of the iron, rebounded by Dunlap. Or not. <laughs> I will shut up. <laughs> the announcer's jinx strikes here. At <laughs> I've been called out for that now twice, <laughs> so I will stop. Well, it's a three-point game here with 2.43 to go in the third. So here's that defense again. It, yep. Kind of a 2-3, then it goes 3-2. There's just a lot of floating around. 
and it's working. Here's Dunlap, four on the shot clock here. Perry fires, back iron, no, rebound Munoz. Now Great. a three would tie the game. Great box out there too. That defense has really cranked it up. Pigram a long two, it bounces off, rebounded by Perry. Here's Dunlap, he'll try from outside. And that doesn't drop in. Rebounded by the Dolphins. Here they come again, down three. Davis drops it off. Pretty move to the basket. Daniel Johnson for two. So we've got a one-point game. There's a lob from midcourt. Caught and put back in by Amir Jones. Great positioning there. 30-second timeout after that catch down basically on the baseline, and then good work there from Hinton oh. to work his yeah. way back and adjust and score. But the Dolphins have charged back. That ended an 11-0 run for Whitney Young. That basket by Hinton, I said Jones, I misspoke. It was Hinton, and it's back to a three-point game, but 11 unanswered by the Dolphins, Jimmy, of giving us a tight ball game here late in the third quarter. Defensively causing problems, the most recent possession, or rather the, the second most recent, recent possession before that hit and layup. You know, there was a lot of, just a lot of havoc, and, and yeah. I think Harvard-Westlake looks up, and there's four on the clock, and they're like, well, well we got to shoot here, and that's exactly what the Dolphins want, is they're keeping the Wolverines' heads down, they're focusing on dribbling and not getting the ball stolen, and they look up, and it's single digits on the clock, and they got to hurry, and now we're seeing a full-court look for the Wolverines, and it's kind of real soft here. Well, the Dolphins again could tie it with a three-pointer. Pigram reverses, and that's a travel by Chadwick. So Harvard-Westlake ball with a three-point lead. 90 to go in the third quarter. Here's Trent Perry. And Kaminia back in the game. His elbow jumper's good. So Kaminia back in there with three fouls. That's his first bucket of the second half. He's got 13 in the game. Munoz, jump stop. He slipped, and he slipped with the pivot foot. That's a travel. Yeah, lucky nothing came of that injury-wise. Oh, yeah. That looked pretty slick there at the free throw line. Caught the ball. Kamenia was there. Tried to throw the brakes on and make an adjustment. Almost blew a tire. So we're inside of a minute now in the third. Harvard-Westlake by five. Led by double digits earlier in this quarter before the Dolphins went on a big run. Here's Ori for three. Christian Ori. First bucket for Ori, and just like that, a 7-0 run by Harvard Westlake. The quarter of runs. Chadwick, about a five-second, four-second difference between shot and game clock here for the Dolphins. Davis has it, 12 on the timer. Dribbling, shooting, and it's off the front of the rim. Kamenia gets the rebound, and then he gets fouled with 9.6 to go here in the third. A lot of movement when Davis didn't have the ball to try to get open. When Davis ended up with the ball, that a lot of people buying tickets to that. They were just kind of watching it. And then he hoists up that three. Sean Brown just got that foul. It's his first. Wolverines could have the final shot of the quarter. It's Perry. And, oh, it's bobbled. They had Huggins cutting to the basket, but he couldn't secure it. And the clock runs out. And after three quarters of play, Harvard-Westlake is up 49-41 to over Whitney Young. And you're watching Who Paul South presented by Walmart.
Back for the start of the fourth quarter. And Harvard-Westlake with a 49-41 lead here at Hoop Hall South. Presented by Walmart, night number two of quality high school basketball here in Bentonville, Arkansas. Our second game of four. There'll be six games on the docket tomorrow starting at noon here in Bentonville. And we'll, of course, have them all right here for you. Great host city, great host venue. I know you're partial to a different one, maybe the host <laughs> of last year. I'm sure it was wonderful. Uh, but two auxiliary gyms and this beautiful arena, it's really great for these teams to have extra space to warm up and be. And then obviously the town's been great. Great Here's host. Chadwick from outside with a three. That's a much needed bucket. That ends a 7-0 run for the Wolverines, and we've got a five-point game. Is that the start of the next run? If you're Whitney Young, you sure hope so, and the defense is going to help do that. Well, that was Chadwick's first bucket of the game. Kaminia thought about it from outside. Now it's Ori driving right down the avenue, and he scores. He even, thought he got fouled, too. Even with the block off the backboard, it found its way in. So that's five for Ori all here in the second half. Cross court, Johnson had a quiet game after the big game last night, and Johnson scores right there. Johnson's got six. He had 26 last night. Five-point game again as Perry attacks. Swatted, Johnson. The Wolverines keep it alive. Dunlap misses from three. Another offensive board. Trent Perry out near midcourt. Trying to create a little space. Now here's Ori. Dunlap, catch and shoot, no good. Rebound, put back, no, it's tipped, and Kamenia misses from point blank. Four opportunities there for Harvard-Westlake. That's the breaks you need if you're the Dolphins. But great looks, great boards for the Wolverines. Elbow jumper, Davis doesn't get the roll this time, rebounded by Perry. And then you just can't be one and done on the other side there after all the work defensively. Two minutes gone here in the fourth. Perry pulls up from just inside the foul line and misses. Rebounded by Chadwick. Davis, they reverse it with Pigram. Now he pulls it back outside the arc. Here's Antonio Munoz. Davis now with 10 on the shot clock. Three-pointer Johnson doesn't go. Rebounded by Dunlap. Couple of chances here to creep closer for Whitney Young and they haven't been able to take advantage. Perry working inside around Chadwick. Kind of lulled him to sleep there thinking he was gonna kick it out and then turned one more time and was right in the doorstep. So it's a seven point lead for Harvard Westlake. Davis, and he gets fouled. If that's on Kamenia, which it is, that's mm -hmm. number four. So Kamenia just picked up his fourth. His fourth? Turned to his coach and said, I was doing the thing you told me to do, <laughs> but still, here we are. Well, these are important free throws for Dalen Davis. Try and get this back to a five-point game. Kaminia out after the foul. And Davis buries the first one, so he's got 23 in the game. They're looking at Chadwick over on the uh, bench now for Whitney Young. Like a leg, maybe a cramp or something over there. Yeah. 
So Davis hits both those free throws, and we do have a five-point game again. Ori, the one-hander off the front of the rim, no. And Johnson clears the boards for Whitney Young. Good board. Got to have something. Good look here. Keep it a two-possession game. We've got Sean Brown out there. Munoz looking inside, nearly knocked away, and Pigram recovers and goes to the basket and got fouled. Great job to seal, and really good job defensively to fight over that. And then it was just about Hart, and Pigram was able to gather and go back up. That's the second foul on Trent Perry. And Pigram is at the line for two. And he's got the first one, so that's double figures for Pigram now with 10. And he got both of them. So we have a three-point game with four minutes left. Perry and a foul as he hits the deck hard. Johnson picks up number three here, upset with himself. Went straight up and then reached out a little bit more than maybe he should have. But those blocks, they just seem so juicy. There is Trent Perry at the foul line. And that's a big miss well, in a three-point game. Good foul then. Perry will try the second one. And he makes it. It's a two-possession game again. 54-50. 3.45 to play. Bigram. And a timeout's taken by Whitney Young. Coach Slaughter wants a full timeout. We'll take it as well with... 3.38 remaining, Dolphins have the ball trailing by four here at Hoop Hall South, presented by Walmart. remaining. Harvard Westlake up by four. The Whitney Young Dolphins have the ball in front court, however. And they'll try an inch closer. The 338 left, as I said. Both teams have three timeouts, and neither side's in the bonus just yet. Five fouls for Harvard Westlake, two for Whitney Young. So if Whitney Young is trailing uh, as we continue here, Jimmy, they're going to have to do a lot of fouling to try and force that one and one. Yeah, the pace we've been playing with the last couple games, and especially today, uh, we may throw a parachute in this one as we get into crunch time, fouling, and throwing the brakes on the timing here. There's Brown on the perimeter, and we are going the other way. Foul away from the ball on Munoz. Working for positioning, and then the coaching staff working for future <laughs> yeah, Coach Slaughter was not pleased with nope. that call. Still working on it. <laughs> Here's Trent Perry across the timeline. Nearly poked away, and they'll get a foul here on Pigram. And that's the second on Pigram. 
to second. You don't want the fouls to deter your intensity. That's what's kept you here. If you're the Dolphins. Brady Dunlap driving to the cup, and he gets fouled. Oh, we got robbed of something special right there from Huggins. <laughs> but Brady Dunlap showing his skill there with the ball, not just a shooter, took that all the way. Down the left side, and then up with the right hand, trying to pin it off the backboard. Fouled in the process. As we mentioned, headed to Notre Dame to play with Mike Bray, for Mike Bray. And Dunlap hits the first free throw. That foul was on Daniel Johnson, and that's number four on him. Dunlap has 12. And now he's got 13. So still two possessions. Still tons of time. This is going to be a good finish. Brown guarded by Perry. Davis drops it down, and they got an offensive foul there on Pigram. That's his third. Good work there by Hinton. He felt the arm. He saw the arm extend. We all did. And then he really solidified it by heading to the deck. So well, now Harvard-Westlake can add to their lead. Perry, a mid-ranger, is good. Find the space off the screen. Stop, hop, and pop, and it's an eight-pointer. And that, the last five have been scored by Harvard-Westlake. Pigram can't get it to go. Fighting for the rebound, great effort by him. And a new possession for the Dolphins. This is the guy that needs the ball with 2.20 left. Davis loses the defender and puts it down. Davis. Well, that's 26 for Dalen Davis. Back to a two-possession game. Dunlap swatted by Munoz, but they call the foul. That's uh, lower half of the body there. Great work for Munoz to contest, get the block ultimately, but the legs got tangled up. And, of course, you're allowed to land safely. And this is the guy that needs the ball for the Wolverines down the stretch here. Well, he's got two more free throws coming here. He was in the act that time, and he misses the first one. Based on his game, I would imagine that he's upset with that one. One more here for Brady Dunlap. Missed them both. Big rebound, Hinton, and Hinton puts it in. That's a backbreaker. A guy that probably doesn't miss two does, and then Hinton, one of the undersized Wolverines players, with a big-time effort. So the lead is eight with 1.50 to go. Davis left it short, batted around, and it goes out of bounds. And we're going the other way. Wolverine ball. Davis, nobody came to guard. And I guess he just didn't think it was going to be that open and left it quite short. Ori will inbound it. Seven team fouls on Whitney Young, so should they foul, it will be a one and one. Perry hands it off, Dunlap. Nice movement there, and Dunlap with the flush. That might be a nail. That's right. It's a 10-point game with 120 left, and the exclamation point perhaps. Oh, well, wait a minute. This is, this is awkward. One ref goes offensive, uh -oh. the other with a blocking call. And they'll okay. chat. Yeah, Kamenia took the bump there. It would be Kamenia's fifth. That's right. Who wins the argument? It's an important one. Well, now all three officials are talking it over. Does the guy whose call it is not break the tie? Well, they're going to the table, which leads me to the lead. Do we 
Uh, they go double foul. Uh, well, this is wild. There's no replay console over there. Well, we got two officials at the scores table, and I assume the public address man will explain to us what exactly is the call because we're not sure. We're talking to the official scorer. I, I mean, I think you have just, to pick one, yeah, block or charge. R report the foul. Do it with like you always do. Hold up a number and do the hand motion. Well, I have a replay console here. I'm yep. going to look at it. Yeah? What do you see? <laughs> well, it's not up to me. I mean, Kaminia is he's, he's sliding. He's moving. And it didn't look like anything forceful there from. And now Coach Slaughter is heated with the officials. Well, I think that's. Our answer. He was out near mid-court. He's still talking to the officials. Can we find out? That would be important. Did they call nothing? So does that mean... Hello? <laughs> Someone. <laughs> well. Offsetting penalties I guess we'll or replay <laughs> second down. That's right. It's still a 10-point game. With 105 to go. Folks, I don't know. Just uh, use your own imagination. And yeah. Now Great. Harvard Westlake right. called a timeout. timeout so <laughs> they didn't call a foul on anybody after all that, apparently? Or they did? No one said anything. No one did anything. I, I, of the two teams, Whitney Young is more so upset. We, we think it was on Pigram, and it was his fourth. We think. That's what... Well, did they put that on the board that they way? They did put it on the board, but 13, it was not yeah, announced okay. or uh, okay. indicated by the officials. All right, so then offensive foul. Yeah, I see that now. Uh, fourth on Pigram obviously negates the N1, which was called by one ref. The other, who was behind the play, got his yeah. offensive foul. I, I don't we, know. We could have asked if we were courtside, but here at the top of the gym, it's hard to – Interpret when no signals are given. Yeah, I mean, literally no <laughs> hand signals no. given to anybody. Obviously, telling the official scorer is good enough. That works. Uh, but, you know, we've been here all, all week so far. I think they could give us something. I think next step next year is I'm just miking them up. But, see, the conversation right now that <laughs> coaches are having with him is a reason why you don't. Yeah, we, we I don't have a uh, uh, dump button here. <laughs> As Coach Slaughter was continuing to work, he knows he's, he has one more game, and maybe these things will pay off because with a minute two left to go and ten points, it's looking like Harvard-Westlake will maintain their national ranking. Brady Dunlap will inbound here at midcourt. 20 on the shot clock for Harvard-Westlake. They lead it by 10. Chadwick's back in the game. They were looking at his leg earlier. He's back out on the floor for Whitney Young. Shot clock winding down, and the jumper doesn't go for Ori. Offensive board, Dunlap. Dunlap with his fingerprints all over this game here in the fourth quarter. And there is a foul with 32.4. Just the presence of mind and, and calmness of grabbing that rebound, dribbling out, settling in. Pivoting, 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 putting it above his head, getting it to a teammate, milking clock, and sealing the win. Free throws right here. It's a one and one, and the free throw doesn't go for Hinton. Ten-point game. Catch and release. Johnson missed it all, and that will just about do it with 21.6. Yeah, you got to think that a Daniel Johnson game like last night would have made this a lot closer, but only six here tonight and a foul extremely far from the basket. That will just 
drag this one out here. You had the one and one where you wanted it in terms of the fouling to extend the game, but there's really not much to extend here with 19.4 and a 10-point difference. This Whitney Young team will face Little Rock Christian tomorrow at noon in our first game. And Harvard-Westlake will play Bentonville West tomorrow at 4.30 here at Hoopal South in Bentonville. You probably know a little bit about both of those matchups. How do you think the Harvard-Westlake and Bentonville West game? I am uh, I'm interested. Little Rock Christian not in the largest classification in Arkansas, to, so to see how they match up, really intrigued. They got a very talented roster. There's no doubt about that. And Bentonville West, their coach Greg White, he's not afraid of facing anybody, anytime, anywhere. So that should be a tough one too. This one is just about done officially, as Harvard Westlake hangs on for a 64 to 52 win over the Whitney Young Dolphins. So to look at the, uh, the game here, Brady Dunlap with 15 and Nicholas Kamenia with 13. Robert Hinton with 14 for the Harvard Westlake Wolverines. And they were impressive in their first game here at Hoop Hall South. Yeah, Daniel Johnson had to do a lot of work for Whitney Young to guard the big men. Didn't have a lot of offensive opportunities, maybe a little bit of early foul trouble, and it all fell on Dalen Davis, who had 26. And Pigram with 11 for Whitney Young. Not enough as the Wolverines impress. And now we'll get a little rest and come back tomorrow as we move right along halfway through day number two of Hoop Hall South. Stand by for our third game here in just a little while. Moravian prep against Coronado and then the nightcap after that with Bentonville versus Bentonville West in what is a conference game for those two cross town foes. So for Jimmy Smith, Derek Ruskin saying so long for just a little while here at Hoop Hall South presented by Walmart.